Hello and welcome to the Parent of Tools podcast. My name is Jason. And my name is Jordan. And this is the podcast where myself and Jason, just a couple of regular dads, have a chat about what it's like to be dads, parents, and everything that goes with it. Beep, 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 beep. So, Jace, on today's episode, we are going to be talking about making time for yourself as a parent and also having time for your marriage, your spouse, your partnership, your relationship. Yeah. Are there <laughs> any other synonyms <laughs> that go with it? But first, before we get into that, how are you? Uh, I think I'm good. Solid um, start. Yeah, it's one of those <laughs> ones where, uh, so I, I, as you can tell just by that sentence, I don't really know what's happened this week. Mate. It's been two weeks since we last recorded and it feels like a few days. It does. We always say, oh, it's been a while, hasn't it, since we've sat down? I, I think... I must be stuck in the middle between when you get older, time flies mm. because that's the same time flies when you're having fun. I think I've had fun. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Don't it's gone by so quickly. I wouldn't remember it. Yeah, exactly. But I'm definitely finding everything is moving quicker now. And I don't know whether that's because Noah started school and mm. like routines changed, all that sort of stuff. But I think, I think I'm all right. How are you? I'm smashing. Yeah. Still not one hundred. Yeah. Still, still not one hundred percent. I would say, health wise, from the from the flu. From the flu. yeah, we're getting there. Like, um, say I'm approaching like eighties, mid eighties. So what's really weird? This is completely off topic. Don't you find it so bizarre that we don't have a single medical test that can just be done in like an hour as like a diagnosis of everything, just like you do on your computer. Yeah. How's everything going? There we go. Perfect. How, are you How much RAM usage have you got going on? Yeah. We don't have that as humans. If you could give a percentage, yeah. <laughs> that'd be superb. And then if employers said, look, anything below 40, don't come in. <laughs> or if you're at 95% as well, take a break. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're just too slow, everything's clogging up. <laughs> that'd be good. So, yeah, I'm still there. Uh, we're getting there. I feel loads like, oh my word. I can't believe how ill I felt. But, um, yeah, we've all had a bit of like fresh as flu. Fresh as flu. Like the back to school yeah. cold. I need to think of a good word for it, like the term time tickle. <laughs> <laughs> like sniffle. Oh no, the tickle's got me again. The start the That sounds dodgy. The the return to school sniffle. That maybe. Yeah, it's yeah, getting closer. The seasonal school sniffle. I don't know. The SSS. Yeah. I'll, Isn't that something to do with... I'll mood board it. The World Wars? Uh, not a clue. If you say so. <laughs> I have no idea. But yeah, it's been, a, it's been a mad couple of weeks. So we had Luca's birthday with the mental party. Yeah. Then it was my birthday. And then it was Myla's birthday. <gasps> All within three weeks. Three birthdays, three weeks. It was your birthday? It was, yeah. I mean, I'm such a terrible friend. I didn't even know that. I don't make a fuss of it anymore. How old are you now? 33. 33. The I big know. three, three. Knocking on. That classic traditional celebratory age I, I said this to one of my mates his, his birthday is the day before mine mm. um, and we're the same age and I said it's like the year 8 of birthdays <laughs> and no, no one's bothered about it it's got no sort of importance to it it just oh, came and went well happy belated birthday oh, thank you so much did you do anything to celebrate? Um, we went to Hickory's Smokehouse Hick oh nice which was nice and then um, I thought you know what all I wanted to do was play football because it was the day that we go, you know, play five aside. So I went and played football whilst having the flu. <laughs> Awful decision. Oh, my word. It was terrible. So, yeah, I was just coughing up a lung. Was nearly sick a couple of times. The hickories nearly became the sickeries. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, other than that, lovely time. And then Mala was three. So my baby was three. Yeah. I'm not a new dad anymore. Nope. And also mm. your... I mean, she's definitely toddlering. She is. She's on the verge of exiting toddlerhood into just childhood. I think in her mind, she's on the verge of adulthood. <laughs> of course. But um, yeah, over the summer, like her speech has just gotten really good. You can have a conversation with her now, mm -hmm. um, which is really nice. She comes out with some funny stuff. Like earlier on, we would, we went to uh, we went to B and M. Shout out B and M. And yep. she just was taking ages to get out of the car. So just grabbed her hand and said, "Come on, jump down." She went, "Oi!" I was just kind of taking a bit long. She went, 
Flipping heck. <laughs> right, you're, you're a three-year-old. <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's been really good. And three, like I said, three birthdays in three weeks. My wife's head must have been spinning. But again... She's the party planner. She's the party planner, knocks it out of the park with the, the frozen party. It's part of the party planning lifestyle. Yeah, it's just, you know... She didn't choose the party planning lifestyle. <laughs> I was thinking that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, once again, shout out to Leanne because she did a wonderful party and we all had a great time. So something that's been bothering me since my daughter started school mm. and like you mentioned it last year when, when Lucas started school. Yeah. Um, I didn't really think it was a thing because this wasn't a thing when she was going to preschool and it's the pickup of going, oh, so what did you do today? Oh, yeah. And it's like, it's an interrogation. It's like, I will not give you any information, even yeah. if it costs me everything. Yeah. And then we'll have to like try and trick her into like having different conversations about what she did that day at school. Yeah. Because just either she forgets or she treats it like a well-kept secret. Yeah. I have no idea what they do at school. I can't remember. Can't remember or, uh, and then just get distracted by something else. Yeah. It's so weird. I, it's one of those things. Do you know, we, um, we talked about a few months ago things you don't have to teach your kids. Yeah. Like, are we there yet? Like withholding all the information from the day. Yeah. <laughs> they all just do it. It's like they've banded together and, and gone, nobody outside this room. Yeah. <laughs> hears about what's gone on today. It's all like right? they're scared to tell you just in case they can't go or something. <laughs> yeah. It's like, do you know Men in Black that, memory thing. yeah as soon it's, as they leave it's like they've got one of those at school and the teacher goes right get your coats on bang no memory of the day what's what is it i don't know i don't know i can't remember but it's it's so bizarre like but so first full week last week of school smashed it oh man loves it good it's not a problem like we had issues with her not liking preschool and nursery like crying a lot love school good. love school loves her friends Loves the teachers. Amazing. Loves it. It's great. So you said she's going homeschool on a Friday. Here we go. Yeah. Have you had a full week? Have you done it yet? So yeah, Em had her first homeschool session on a Friday. Um, it's the first week of school and she's reception. Could she remember what she did that day? Yeah, well, I, I know because Em told me. Yeah. <laughs> Is it different with homeschoolers? <laughs> like you come home from work, you say, what do they do? They tell you everything. No, no, I still didn't tell me what still she did that day. Still can't remember. No. <laughs> It still goes in that little box of school and learning. Yeah. But because it's reception and it's the first week, there wasn't much work allocated. Oh, handy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> em, em did make up some more work and like they'd done pretty much the whole school day by like half 10. <laughs> but it like on Fridays at school, she would have just been doing PE um, and then had like assembly for the afternoon. So there wasn't a lot of other stuff going on anyway. Oh, you've picked a great day. It was a good day. Yeah. Um, and so they went to, to the Butterfly House. Lovely. Did some educational learning there. Mm. Uh, but yeah, that, that was fun as well. Went went well. Yeah. Both parties loved it. Do they still sing in assembly? I don't know. Ah, so Noah came home the other week singing a song that we used to sing at church in her little kids group. Mm. And she's like, oh, we sang this today at school. Oh, that's so nice. they she goes to a Church of England school. Yeah. It's quite a small one as well, and they make quite a big deal of being a Church of England school. Mm -hmm. So I imagine they still do. Yep. Um, and I think at her school they have like like they pray together, like they have like daily songs. Yeah. Um, which is just cool for a kid anyway. Um, but yeah, so I, th I think so. But I don't know if they still have the the cheesy assembly songs. I wonder if they still do that thing. Do you remember at school when? The teacher would welcome you in assembly. They go, "Good morning, children." Good morning, Mrs. Good yeah, morning. of course. And you, but you'd go up at the end. <laughs> Good morning, Mrs. Parker. <laughs> Wonder if Definitely, they still do that. That's a classic. Can't get rid of that. Do you remember like flashing your your watch in the teacher's eyes? Yeah, and like, like in assembly, sunshine. looking around, seeing what's reflective. Yeah, yeah. This was a really weird one. I don't know if anyone else did this, but we would sometimes have badges. Badges like. Just like little badges, and I'd take them off and try and pierce them through my thumb. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Through, through the top, like, oh, like, yeah. Through there, through the. And I remember that was that was prime assembly time. I knew that yeah. was going to happen at assembly. Yeah. Of seeing which finger I can get it through. Yeah. Like just for the listeners, not through the whole f finger, just at the tip. 
I remember they used to play music in my primary school, going into assembly, and the year sixes would get the honour. Like two year sixes would do the music. I, I got it, and uh, they took it off me. <laughs> <laughs> Did you go to a primary school? Yeah. Reception to year six? Yeah. So I went to a first school. Did Reception you? to year four. And then a middle school. Posh. No, it's just a different part of the country. And oh, then, I, right. then I moved. Um, and then I went to a secondary school. Yeah. But, so in, in my first school, the year fours were able to sit on benches at the back. Oh. I remember that being a big thing. Yeah, big deal. Um, and then the same when I went to middle school, like the year nines. Unless you were sat on those bits. Oh, yeah, the little bumps. Yeah. But still, still felt like a privilege. It did. Yeah. Even though it was painful. Yeah. A I painful said, privilege. I said this before, I would love to go back to my primary school. And just see, like, how much smaller it is than what I remember. <laughs> I drove past that mine um, last last week, the weekend. Nice. Had no in the car and M. Um, and as we drove past, I was like, no, that's where that's where daddy went to school as a, as a child. And I was like, oh, wow. And M was like, you've, you've done this before. <laughs> oh. I was like, oh, you can't see anything from the road. <laughs> Share my joy. <laughs> it's like, I've seen all this before. I've not learned anything new. Lovely. <laughs> Well, speaking of uh, your homeschooling, we posted a little clip on TikTok, as we oh, do. we did. Saying, I'm going to be homeschooling part-time. We had loads of comments from people, some good, some bad. Yeah. Some in between. And But I said this, as soon as I mentioned it last week, that, as soon as you mention homeschooling... It divides the camps. It div- so many people have, like, such strong opinions mm. and, like, preconceived ideas about yeah. what that entails. Yeah. Um. Even though in the video, I think it mentioned exactly what we were planning to do. Yeah. They don't seem to have got that no. in the comments. Well, that's the internet for you. Particularly TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> so we've picked out some, uh, some comments. And there were a few that were genuinely like, can you keep us updated with how this is going? Yeah. Because we're really interested in doing this. People didn't realise you could do, uh, I think it's called hybrid schooling. Or is it flexi-schooling? So, yeah. The, the technical term would be flexi-schooling. Um, we at the moment on a technicality are doing a reduced timetable mm. so the school haven't officially committed to doing flexi schooling yep um and i think that's because they don't like it um and it's also in this weird kind of stage of they're not for homeschooling yep yet this is all, almost like the little trial for us and for the teachers to go is this going to work so i think when they first agreed to it in their minds they were like we're going to stop doing this after christmas mm-hmm. And we were like, well, can we just keep the conversation open? Like, it's if we fair. review it and, like, nothing's, like, it's clearly not impacting, no, and negatively, mm. let's keep it open. Yeah. Um, and they're like, okay. So, technically, it would be flexi-schooling if they make it official. But for now, it's reduced hours, a reduced timetable. So, so, if people are interested, that's what we've gone for. Practically, then, how do you start that conversation? You pick your school. You speak to the head teacher. And you just go, can I have a word? Yeah, literally speak to their teacher. They will probably ask you to email it to them. Classic. Um, and then they will then probably ask you to speak to whoever their governing body is. So like schools, like hospitals, are usually part of like different... A mat. Yeah. Or an academy. Yeah, academies or just belong to different groups and overseeing bodies. Mm. Um, not like... <clears throat> the government <laughs> like my five multiple groups that support them um and so you'll usually have to email them and have a conversation with them first mm-hmm. um and our first response was like not an option no way and so we had to be quite pushy um and insist and essentially we just insisted on a conversation yeah because we were like if we can get this away from emails and just face to face or even a zoom mm. we can explain what we're trying to do but also combat a lot of the negative comments of people that people have said, we were preemptively trying to combat those. Yeah. Of like, we're not doing this because like we're weird conspiracy theorists. Like we're not just want to have fun. We like we we're serious about our child's just education. Do what's best. Yeah. Yeah. And I think as soon as the teachers saw that, it was like okay, a bit more leniency. Yeah. Cool. Well, there you go. If you're interested, speak to your head teacher. So first comment comes from Rob. He said, "I'd love to homeschool my kids if we could afford to. I would be on it." And this, like, this is the main thing. Like, we are, we are in such a privileged position. Um, and particularly because my wife does condensed hours. Yeah. So she still works full time. 
but she condenses her hours and so she has Fridays off. Yeah. Um, and so essentially she's working a little bit extra in those days so she can take that time off. Yeah. If we didn't have that, we wouldn't be able to afford it. Yeah. I know condensed hours, uh, so working, like you say, four days, but full-time wage is becoming more popular with mums, especially, um, that I've noticed recently, especially when you see people's out of offices, they say, oh, mm. my full-time working hours are Monday to Thursday. I'll be back in the office on, on Monday. I, I'd, I'd take it if it was an option. Mm. And like, I mean, in the UK, they're considering four-day working week. Oh, please. And that's not... Go on, Kia. What they're... I think what they're looking at isn't condensed hours. Mm. So it's not cramming five days of work into four days. It's saying we can get just as much work done in four days. Yeah. Because it's just the, the way that we re view productivity. If you're yeah. not shattered, you're not slogging. It's, like, it's only four days. Crack. And I, I think it works. Not, not done it, but... <laughs> um, there are definitely... Because I work um, four days at home, one day in the office, mm -hmm. which I'll come back to in a little bit. Um and it is flexi time. It is you work when you can work or when you want to work as long as you get the work done. Mm. But also be mindful that other people will be working. So I know some people do core hours where you yeah. have to work 10 till 2 or, you know, 9 till 1 and then take lunch, whatever. Um, we've got a really good balance of you can do whatever. And there were some days like Friday evening, I was just doing some emails knowing that we had a different Monday morning. For example, yeah. I can't remember what, what the exact... Oh, it was Myla's birthday. It was Thursday morning. So I did a bit more extra Wednesday afternoon, knowing that we'd be opening in presents. And it works. Mm. And it works for us. Um, so yeah, I think one of those, you know, that's one of those lockdown things. And the next comment from Cruise Impossible. I mean, that's a name. Uh, it says, I think it's because lockdown created a huge divide in learning for the kids and some parents who don't even have one GCSE. They think they can homeschool better than what their kid could learn in the classroom. Yeah, I tried to start an argument with this person. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was trying to yeah. just, a bit of rage bait. You did. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm, what I'm saying is, you know, lockdown changed a lot of things, the way we work. I think, I personally think lockdown just highlighted a lot of stuff. Hmm. I don't think it changed anything. I think it made us just aware of it. I think we were all just stuck in this is life hmm. and we just deal with it. When lockdown hap happened, we were like, oh, we actually have time to think about this now. And like, if you ask a lot of the teachers before lockdown as well, like schools were already struggling for funding and having enough teachers before lockdown. Yeah. That just then helped us realize how mad it was because teachers had to go into overdrive for lockdown. I think like a, a really good example for me of this was pre-lockdown. I drove to Oxford or Cambridge, one of the two. I think it was, yeah, Oxford. Two hours 45 it took me for a 20 minute meeting <laughs> because that's how we did things. Yeah. Whereas now it would just be, right, let's jump on Zoom. Or let's jump on Teams. And it's just, it's more efficient. Yeah, it's, it's different. And at the time you'd have been like, not many people were doing online meetings really, but it just saved so much time. And it saved resource, it saved energy, all that sort of stuff, like literal energy and also my energy. Yeah. But, we just changed the way we do things. I think people looked at school different and wanting to be home around their kids more. I think we've said this loads of times. Mm. I think as well, there's, 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 a, there's a lot of parents which feel like homeschooling is, it's not just something that they'd like to do because it's a nicety. It's now becoming something that we like, almost feel like we have to do mm. to help give our kids the best. Like if, if I could afford to put my daughter into private school, that'd be a different conversation. Yeah. Um, but I can't. <laughs> um, and that's, especially in the UK, like the level of learning that you get in private school compared to state funded school is, is vastly different. Yeah. That's just the way it is. That's not, from what I've heard, that's not the same in other countries. Um, like, so for example, a friend of mine lives in Canada. They were saying that private education is usually just access to different types of education. So if you want to learn a particular language yeah. or be exposed to particular lessons, Whereas in the UK, it very much is like the level is higher because they have more resources mm. and like the teachers are giving more support. Um, and like, don't be wrong, like there's so many kids in this country and there's not as many teachers as we need. Um, and like people misunderstand when I say homeschool, I'm not dissing school 
at all. Um, and I'm not suggesting that I can do better than most teachers, like this helpful commenter. Well, you've said. got more than one GCSE. I also do, yeah. Me and my wife both have degrees, <laughs> which I commented um, and tried to rage bait them into uh, an argument. Um, just touching on the private school thing. Yeah. My best mate went to private school. Well, two of my best friends did, actually. Um, but my best mate, he was my best man, now lives in America. And we got, like, the same GCSE results. Mm. But I went on school trip to Scarborough. He went to Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah. There's, <laughs> and it's, there's the differences. <laughs> it's, not if, it's not even just, like, education. It's access. Mm. It's, um, like, confidence. Like, knowing like what is available in life. Yeah. Like you get such more like a personalized, tailored experience of education. Whereas in state school, like you can slip through the gaps really easily. Yeah. Um, and I feel like I did at school, like just teachers were just so overwhelmed. They just didn't really know what to do with me. And I was an annoying kid. Mm. So that probably didn't help. Well, his school had a, a swimming pool yeah. <laughs> and our school had a bog when it rained. <laughs> <laughs> can my kids get you swim or run? <laughs> Going out in the bog. Everyone's getting cholera. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, also, there are there are people who homeschool their kids who shouldn't. Yeah. Because I saw a TikTok the other day where it was a comedian was like, I, I'm, I was homeschooled and he was like, I, I know everything my mum knows. Absolutely. And yeah. that was it. <laughs> like, so I understand the argument, but also that's not our situation. Uh, next one, uh, we've we kind of covered this already. Um, Sammy, how did you get the school to agree? I really want to do this with my son who struggles with school immensely. Like you said, just go ask the question. Uh, but also, even on that one, it's like, it, I don't know if homeschool is always the automatic thing that you need to consider. Mm. Like if your kids are scr struggling in school, like there are different things that can be done. Like they even offered for us, like we would be able to almost be like a teaching assistant for Noah because she was born premature and they thought that's what our concern was that she would struggle to keep up so they were like why don't you try coming to support um, will you pay me <laughs> yeah whereas like homeschooling is a big jump mm. whereas school can help in a lot of ways they might just need extra support um, but yeah how do you get the school just talk to them yeah and just talk we had another one from uh, Michael Michael Schools are getting less resources, so we'll take our kids out so the school gets even less. Is that how that works in this country? So schools are funded per, well, by the amount of students they have, pupils they have. Are they? Yeah. I mean, so you should have thought about everybody else. You selfish man. <laughs> Do you reckon they get less funding because my daughter's going like one day less a week? They're going to get X percent of their, f of their funding pulled because Noah's not there on a Friday. I, I don't know this is true. I don't think schools in this country get funded the same based on pupils. I think they do. I rec I, I'm going to hazard a guess and reckon it's different because academies don't get the same funding, do they? Because they're often business ventures. True. I don't know. And so why then are there schools that have better resources and better equipment than other schools who don't? Is that purely a management thing? Mm-hmm. Because you could have an inner city school of a thousand kids yeah. that have less resources than, but then it might be per capita, so to speak. So for example, like the school that my daughter goes to, it's a really small, like village school. Yeah. Um, they only have like 15 kids in a classroom. Um, so they merge some of the, the, the years together. 14 on a Friday. Yeah, 14 on a Friday. <laughs> um, but it's incredibly well run. They've got great resources. There's a school down the road, which has a lot more kids, but I wouldn't say has comparable resources. Mm. So I don't, I actually don't know. I'm going to Google it just while. Yeah, you Google it. I'll read the next comment. Uh, this one's from Sophie. I really want to do this too. I want my little one to have the social aspect, but I want to do some myself. And this is where people are asking, can you share uh, about the approach? But that's something, and that's the first thing I said to you, wasn't it? I said, oh, how are you going to handle the social yeah. side of things? How how are you handling the social side of things? Well, for number one... I suppose you're only one week in. Yeah, but also she goes to school four days out of five. Mm. Like, if there is a significant, like, dent in her social ability because she's not going to school that one day extra a week, then we would reconsider. But also, our daughter goes to so many classes outside of school 
like she does gymnastics, she does football, she does dance. Church. Every single week. And church every single week. Mm. Um, they're four completely different environments that a lot of kids aren't exposed to, different kids. Um, and so arguably, so that's that, that's one of the school's main concerns. They were like, socially, how is this going to impact her? Yeah. Um, and our argument is we're aware of that, hence why she's also getting exposed to all these other things. Yeah. Um, and I think on the whole, like homeschooled kids that are involved in loads of other activities are quite well. And like, so I, I used to work as, um, like work with young people and youth as my job. And like, there are a few homeschool kids who were like 14, 15 and their social awareness was far exceeding a lot of the other kids because mm. they spent more time with adults. Yeah. And so they were exposed to a lot more different situations and just adapted so much quicker. Yeah. Same with the kids that went to private school. <laughs> Yeah. their social abilities just exceeded um, like normal kids' schools because they just spent time with their peers. Mm. So, I don't know, that's my argument. I think church for me growing up has been socially like amazing because yes, I've got friends and yes, my family were you know, always there. But how many people talk to old people that aren't their grandparents? Different cultures, different races. Different cultures, yeah, absolutely. Different languages a lot of the time. Yeah. Like, yeah, church is huge like especially for developing how to just talk to loads of different people yeah but then also it caused me problems in secondary school because i had friends that were 19 20 21 when i was 15 16 mm. and so i was talking to my teachers like i'd speak to my adult friends ah, okay yeah and they didn't didn't really like it and i was just thinking i'm just having the same jokes that i do at church yeah or because youth at the time went to, you know, 25. So it was like, yeah, it didn't, it, it was really good, but I just didn't know how to kind of apply it properly. But it's just like any social development, isn't it? Like if, well, yeah, if yeah. a kid is, if their only contact is with other kids their own age, they'll only ever evolve at the rate of the nor the average yeah. medium of their friends. Yeah, Whereas yeah. if it's constantly surrounded by even aunties and uncles and, which yeah. church is essentially that. It's just community, isn't it? Then you'll learn better skills. Yeah, because one of my best mates was two years older than me and his brother was two years older than him and he could drive. Yeah. So like I was hanging out with lads that could drive when I was 12, 13 and thought I was just so cool. And it, they were cool, but at the same time, I don't know, I feel like it, it like I said, it just cost me with teachers because I was speaking <laughs> to them like I'd speak to my youth leaders and didn't go down very well <laughs> i didn't have that issue <laughs> so i found the funding question oh yeah go on so in the uk uh or specifically england the government allocates money for all state funded schools including academic ac academies and council run schools using a formula Ooh. that ensures funding is fair and reflects their pupils needs this is called the national funding formula takes into a variety of factors such as number of pupils and how its location makes affect schools running costs so location is a factor location pupils also that opens it up to less scrutiny of i'm and this is i know it's a broad statement but favorable funding to schools where you know who you know yeah yeah um which seems to be the case in the uk yeah um well, it is. When there's funding involved in any sort of thing, it's who you know and just the way it works. And like lobbying and like influence, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So back to that comment, you're wrong. <laughs> Go tell him that. Um, and the last one comes from uh, Mwado. 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 Uh, and I absolutely agree with this. This is a genius, sneaky way to get long weekends away as a family. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Friday afternoon, geography and orienteering. That's true. We're off. But this again, is how you use the sat nav. This is a really strong argument for it as well. Of like, mm. this is, I'm so against the rule, the fine that parents have to pay for taking their kids on holiday. Yep. Like, I am vehemently against it. What a good word. Vehemently. Yeah. Well, is that even a word? It is now. Yeah. I think it's a word. <laughs> I could be wrong. Um, but I'm, I'm, it makes me mad mm. that in the UK, you get fined if you take your kids out of school to go on holiday because arguably, they're getting better life experience, being exposed to different cultures, different countries, yeah. going on holiday. And how much really is a week of missed school going to impact them? 
or a day if you go for a long weekend. If you go for a long weekend. I nearly drowned on holiday. Like, you don't get those experiences <laughs> at school unless you go to private I school. I learned how to barter in the Ch- Tunisian markets for a chessboard. Yeah. Yeah. You don't learn that in school. Negotiation skills. Yeah. If you there touch you it, you buy it. They don't teach you that. <laughs> you lose a hand. <laughs> but just to reply to the comment, I still work on Fridays, so it doesn't really work. I know, but you're self-employed now. It's true. But they also have to have a FaceTime with the teachers every Friday. Oh, really? Yeah, to go through, like for safeguarding reasons and probably to avoid this. At what time? In the morning. But so they can assure you're not in Spain. Like, <laughs> Hola. But even if you are in Spain, you're still homeschooling. I mean, yeah, it's someone's home, especially if you're Airbnb. <laughs> yeah. But schools take them on trips. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. You're just doing it in your own way. Doing them a favour. You're doing a school trip every fourth Friday. <laughs> still, if there's a test... There's a, if there's a quiz, it's educational. Yeah, abs- mate, absolutely. So it's going well? I think so. It's one, <laughs> one, one day in and I'm not a part of it. Well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going well. Any other, uh, any other stuff that you've noticed about starting school? It's a big, big old change, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, one thing that, like, not got me worrying, but it's also, like, made me aware of all the social pressures that are at school, mm. even from a young age. Oh, I and thought it, you meant for parents. No, um, there might be that, but mm. I'm not that aware of those yet. <laughs> Parking. Parking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but like, this is really silly. But like, so the first time my daughter was like, oh, I don't want to go to school. It's because she wanted a packed lunch rather than school dinners. Because her friends had packed lunches. Oh. And it was like, we, we'd sent her in packed lunch before, but then she wanted the school dinners. So we sent that in. But she wanted something because her friends wanted it. And it was like that feeling of, oh, I don't, I don't want you to feel awkward. Like, just do what you want to do. Um, so we sat around with Pat lunch. Um, and then she came back and going, but I wanted the school dinners. It's like, well, win. so in their school, they can choose in the morning which one they want. Yeah. But it was just like this really weird moment. I was like, I'm not looking forward to the social anxieties and the social pressure that school brings. And I can't do anything about it. Yeah. Like, it is not, it's, she's got to learn how to deal with a lot of these things. It's, I don't like it. Yeah. You'll get there, though. And they'll get there. I know they will. Yeah. I just don't like it. Absolutely. Yeah, well, we've had a bit of a change as well. So we've um, we've put our kids in after-school club. Ooh. Which, for a lot of people, is like a bit of a... Well, some people even put it on our comments. Like, it's the guilt-inducing after-school club. Mm. And so we, we, we're doing it because we have to. On a Tuesday, we both work. It's my one day in the office. So I can't really moan about being in the office. Um, Leanne's working Tuesday afternoon. So it's just a necessity for us at the minute. Um, and our kids love it. Yeah. The first week, Luca went to after school club. He said, can I go to breakfast club tomorrow? <laughs> he loved it so much. So yes, there's, there wasn't for me like that guilt of, because you know I remember going to after school club and really enjoying it. And um, so I didn't really feel too guilty about it, but I know a lot of people do, but they love it. Mm. And like so many of his friends were there and they all walked together from school. Um, Obviously his sister was there, so they really enjoyed seeing each other like outside of our usual environments that we, you know, they're part of. So it was just one of those things. We're doing it because we have to Mm. and they want to go more. So they're both going to breakfast club tomorrow. (laughs) Is it expensive? I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so for for Myla it's covered within the hours oh okay oh, so amazing. we only have to pay for uh, the breakfast club I want to say it's £9 a child a day yeah I think maybe I could be wrong but we were paying last going off at nursery £72 a day oh, okay yeah, fair yeah no so brainer. this you know with the hours it's it's saving us a lot of money I was a bit nervous about her going because now she's three She's a lot more aware. And she had a really like good friend at her old nursery that mm. she'd always ask about. And I, I wondered how she would react like going and her not being there and then realizing she doesn't know anybody else, but she absolutely loved it. Oh. She had a great time. Couldn't wait to go back. Um, so yeah, it's all it's all changed, but good positive change. And that, I think that's the, like, people feel guilty for it, but sometimes it's that's all you can do. Yeah. Like, and like, so Noah's been asking to go to breakfast club because some of her friends go. Mm. 
um, I, we just can't afford it at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Um, and like, we don't have to. Like, we've we've changed our routine, family routine, which is a big deal for me. Um, <laughs> because, so last episode, I need to apologize to my wife. <laughs> okay. Because what did I, I can't remember what I said um, about M waking Noah up. Oh, yeah, she slept through. Yeah, I was tired and moody. Uh, so we've changed our routine now. So Monday and Tuesday mornings, I used to get up with Noah. Yeah. And I'll go straight to work, seven o'clock. So I can pick Noah up at three. Mm. Um, it just means I'm very tired. Yeah. Because like, you used to a lazy morning. Now I'm having to like jump started. Yeah. Um, but like we can afford that flexibility. So Noah doesn't have to go to any of the extra clubs. If she does, it's just part of life. Like I, I'm struggling to see even now, like how we're going to manage all the holidays. Yeah. And, like childcare. I, I don't, I honestly don't know how people do it. Um, and so we'll stumble our way through that. Yeah. Because I don't think we even have enough annual leave between us to, I mean, I'm self-employed now, but I don't think you as two two working parents have enough annual leave to cover all the school holidays. I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know. Especially if both working full time. I uh, I went on Radio 4, BBC Radio 4 recently. Oh yeah? They got in touch, said, do you want to come on, talk about school funding and fees? Um Childcare funding, sorry, and, and fees. I said yes, and the woman before me, they were paying three thousand seven hundred pound a month for a nanny. Oh my word! Because they're both doctors, so they work twelve-hour shifts. Yeah, and it was more cost-effective and less disruptive to get a nanny than send their kids to <laughs> nursery full time. Wow! It was cheaper. Wow! Maybe it was two thousand seven hundred, but still. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. It's, for you to be able to work. It's so difficult, isn't it? Because it's like, and I think me and Em, my wife, we're constantly having the conversation, even on our own heads and between us of like, we see the benefit of a really good career. Because yeah. obviously it pays for things. It enables you to do a lot of stuff. But also what cost? Because you're losing time. Yeah. Um, and it's like, if we could afford to, we would work as little as possible, um, but also we could we could both probably work more. Mm. But I don't think that would benefit us anymore. And then you're paying more. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think we've at the moment I think we found the the middle ground. Yeah, that's all you can do, isn't it? But that, like, find the balance. That leads on to, um, I think you mentioned at the start of like making time for yourselves. Mm. Yeah, so we had a uh, a message on TikTok uh, from someone that's asked to remain anonymous. It says, hi, Jordan. Hi, Jason. I am new to the podcast and I'm absolutely loving it. It's so refreshing to hear from dads, even though I'm a mum, and your experiences are so incredibly relatable. My husband and I have a daughter who is three and a half. Like Noah, she was born during COVID and we live away from family and friends. So we've had to go through the baby and toddler years mostly on our own. And, we've, and we have found it surprisingly tough mentally. We were prepared for the physical exhaustion, but we were not prepared for the relentlessness, relentlessness of it. I wasn't prepared for that word. <laughs> prepared for the relentlessness of it and the mental fatigue that comes with parenting and which continues into the toddler years. My question to you is this. How do you find time for yourselves other than the podcast? And more importantly, how do you make time for your marriages we both feel like we've lost each other for the first couple of years and we're trying hard to find time to do things for the two of us just to reconnect rather than do life admin stuff, finances, groceries, planning, etc. This was a fear of mine before having a child that we would lose each other as a couple. Any advice? <laughs> Thanks for the message. That's the amazing message, anonymous listener. Um, oh man, that's such a big topic. Yeah. Um, and I don't necessarily have advice, but I have what's worked for us. That's all we can offer. That's all we can offer. Um, and you've probably heard it many times if you regular listener of how much I talk about our schedule and our routine. Mm. Um, and the reason why we put that in place is to make sure that we have adequate time for ourselves, but also for each other and as a family. Um, cause we recognized early on that, like, for me, I was getting, I'd be really snappy and grumpy if I didn't have my introvert alone time. Mm. Um, and then also my wife needed more sleep. 
she's an extrovert and so she needed more contact time with me and I, i'm i'm so introvert I'm, I'm quite happy to sit in a room by myself all week um but so we came up with this schedule um that i would do mornings with noah and then she would do bedtime and then when she was doing bedtime i would have my time by myself which worked out the whole like worked out about an hour every evening yeah um which was amazing um and then em would have an extra lie-in and then so i had to work a lot of evenings as well previously and so we would make sure that we'd have at least three evenings a week together um and like before covid it was a lot less um but then again that's probably one of the things in covid that we changed of like we just need more time for each other um and that was like just vegging together didn't have to be something structured and then we'd make sure that we would do something planned every now and then um i actually my wife told me about an article that she read last week um which was saying on average couples need three hours a week by themselves like alone time to function properly which doesn't seem like a lot but when you've got kids especially in the early days that feels like almost impossible yeah and there definitely is a thing of when they're really young you just have to like knuckle down and get through it have you have you seen that um tv series breeders with martin no. freeman no it's um not one to watch with your kids okay <laughs> but uh it's a little bit depression but also really funny <laughs> right um i watched the episode today um and it was this whole topic like where they were like they're just the priority right now is just raising their kids. Yeah. Um, I don't necessarily think that means you have to abandon like your marriage and your relationship. In fact, I'd say don't. Um, yeah. But there's definitely an element where you're like, we just got to get through this. Yeah. I don't know if that's helpful or even clear. I think so. What about so, you? Watch Breeders. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, it, it does help when you've got family nearby. 100%. Oh, 100%. If you can, you know, get the kids looked after for an evening and, and go out to, for yourselves, you know, that's really helpful. I find those really key times, to be mm. honest. Um, but one thing that we've done is we've kept a really strict bedtime routine. Yeah. And our kids go to bed sort of no later than half past seven with exceptions and we're flexible enough to have those exceptions as long as it's not an everyday thing. And so we noticed, especially with our son, if he goes to bed at half six in the evening and if he fell asleep at half six, he would wake up at six the next day or he'd wake up at quarter six the next day. Hmm. If he went to bed at nine, he would wake up at half six the next day. Like that three hour difference would equate to half an hour oh, okay, yeah. difference in, in the morning. It's not a case that he'd go to bed at nine and wake up at nine. So very quickly we were like, well, we might as well put him to bed early, lose half an hour in the morning, but we gain the evening to ourselves. Yeah. So quite often, well, it was, it was the norm that he was in bed at seven and then we've got the evening to ourselves. And that's what, that's what we did. And, you know, you don't have to have family close by. To, to do that if you've got a child that doesn't settle quickly then it's a different thing and then we'd have come up with something else hmm. um and then you know we had another baby and then it changed again and you, you know for a little time we had to figure something out and that's when it really hit me that it, you know it was a struggle yeah um but no it's just it's just one of those things you that's how we we did it that the evening time for us was was really important um my sister said to me once, like, oh, do you, do you not just want to go wake them up sometimes and just bring them downstairs? And we were like, no. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> I get what she's saying. Like, sometimes you do think, oh, let's, yeah. let's go get them and watch something together. But actually, that's our, our protected time almost. Um, recently watching Love is Blind. Nice. Got through all of that and the reunion. And we've now watched the post TikToks that are doing the rounds. So, yeah. like... Yeah, that's that's something that we prioritised was having our evenings. Mm. And like yourself, you know, and like anybody involved with church stuff, that you're going to be out some, e- some evenings. Sometimes that's stuff that we should both be at, but only one of us can go. And mm. you leave the other one to do the bedtime routine, routine. And it's just one of those. But yeah, for us, it was get them down, have your evening. I think one of the things that 
is like quite contentious a lot of time, especially when you're tired. Mm. It's like you're trying to compare how much each or other have done. Yeah. Oh gosh. And like that, like, I'm guilty of doing that. Like, and I don't mean to. Um, but one of the things that was really helpful for us um, was just be really honest about what you both need to function. Mm. So mine was like, I, I need some alone time like every day. Um, and sometimes I don't get that. That's okay. But if I don't, I, I notice I genuinely struggle. Um, and then for Em, it was like, she needs extra sleep. Whatever those things are, it could be going, going to the gym, like, and don't see those things as like luxuries. Like this is just honestly what we need to have a functional, happy life. And then just make yeah. it work. Like, just like with marriage, like having kids with somebody isn't like fair or equal, but it's just, you, you're like on a team. So sometimes you're going to pull the extra shift. Mm. But overall, if you're having a great time, amazing. Yeah. And this one isn't pulling that weight. Different issue. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. But it's that try and remove like the competition out of it because then everyone wins. Mm. I think we found quite early in our marriage that if we didn't spend quality time together, we'd start to get annoyed at each other. Mm. And then you have kids and that kind of window closes a little bit. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, so we knew that was a sign. If if we're starting to get a bit annoyed at each other and we haven't really, you don't know why you're annoyed at each other, it's because we weren't spending enough time together. Um, and I've said before, and then you have those those times where you do get together and it's just the two of you, and you don't want to talk about the issues because you think, well, this is like, this is the first time we've had to sit together. Let's not have the argument now. But the more you push it off, the worse it gets. So you then have those conversations where you go, right, let's let's not shout at each other. Let's just talk. And then before you know it, you're shouting at each other. I'm not shouting, <laughs> you're shouting. <laughs> We're just talking. <laughs> those those days, are especially with like when you've got a newborn, D and me, at like two in the morning, <laughs> and you just try to keep it together. Yeah. But no, I, I think, um, not to brag or boast, I think we've done quite well as a, mm. as a couple, really, to keep ourselves from losing each other. Um, but those hard conversations, having them really does help. Yeah, 100%. And it's just the, it's like making, and it's just normal marriage stuff, like making each other's priorities, priorities. Mm. So like f for us, for example, the podcast, although it's something that I do, it's like everyone in my family owns it as a priority. Mm. That just means, so for example, tonight, I did half of the bedtime routine and then M took over the other half. Yeah. It was like, that was, usually if it wasn't in the podcast i'd be doing bedtime routine tonight because i was out early yeah but it's like okay this is just something that we we do mm. um and like with everything like yeah it sometimes i feel like it could be waste of time just like vegging together but if i don't have it it yeah everything's just worse yeah and it's that give and take so like tomorrow leanne's out she always goes out on a tuesday so it's my turn to to do that mm. But like you say, I could easily go, you're out every Tuesday. I only do the pod every other Monday. <laughs> but no, I do go out every, on the other Mondays. I do go out. <laughs> but no, it's, it's, it's give and take and it's looking out for each other. Yeah, 100%. Um, and it's like when, when we talked about like going to the gym, like if you make it a priority, it's not just like a self-centered, mm. I need to go to the gym. Um, but with everything, like sometimes you might have to just stop doing stuff for a while. It's going to be some gym talk on the next week's episode. Ooh. Circle back. Do I need to start getting fit again? What, in, in the next 10 a, minutes between recording this one and... <laughs> and change my life priorities. <laughs> Not quite, but yeah, thank you for, for the message. Really honest message. And I've seen a few things online recently about couples feeling like they've lost each other. Um, it's definitely, a, you definitely lose, you lose like a life that you once had. Like mm. a f freedom. Yeah. You, you didn't have that responsibility before. Now you do. One thing we, we did do, and I think I've mentioned this before, we had a list of places we want to visit before we had kids. Yeah. And we just made the most of it. It doesn't help the listener that's written in <laughs> with a, a three and a half year old. But if you're thinking about it, get some stuff planned in. Oh, another thing that just came to my head. Um, like, don't just see childcare as a necessity for when you're at work as well. Oh, yeah. If you can't find time together, use childcare. Like, mm. that is not, that should be guilt free. Like, because your relationship is like so important for you being good parents together. Absolutely. 
Yeah, so thank you so much for the message. And if you do want to get in touch with us, please do at Parenting Tools Pod. Thanks so much for listening.